In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the GDPR compliance tools that the devs over at WordPress created for WordPress 4.9.6, which is released on May 17th, 2018, which is today, if you're watching it today, or in the past, if you're watching it this in the future. But WordPress has created some tools that make the GDPR compliance, especially the data reporting and the data deletion, easier for you to do for people who request this information. And I'm going to show you how this works in the release candidate. This is the night before the release because I can't record this tomorrow. So it might be a little bit different because it's a release candidate, but it should be pretty close because it's released tomorrow. Either way, let's get started. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back from the video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. We help you get better at WordPress. You can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet and you like WordPress and all kinds of WordPress related tricks, click on the subscribe button, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything, and check out our private Facebook group where we hang out, chat, talk WordPress, learn from each other, help each other, and just get better at WordPress. With that out of the way, let's get into the screen capture. I'll see you there. I'm recording this tutorial the day before the actual release. It is currently May 16th, 9 p.m. and the release is happening apparently sometime tomorrow on May 17th. It should be tomorrow, uh, whether it will be actually tomorrow or not, we'll see. But the reason I'm doing this night before is I'm busy tomorrow, so I can't re record it tomorrow. But what I've done is I've installed the latest release candidate on this demo site so we can see the features that are going to come. And there's a couple things that change for the GDPR. First, when we go to settings, we have a new entry called privacy. If we click on there, it's going to take us to a new privacy generation page or privacy policy generation page. And that's what you're seeing here. If you have an existing privacy policy, you can set it here. If you don't have a privacy policy yet, create a new one as well. When you click on create new, you basically go to a new page editor where you enter a title and it has some pre-filled information. So here's our privacy policy. I'm going to call mine GDPR Privacy Policy, and I'm just going to hit Publish. And what we're going to see on the page when I load it is this content here, which is pre-filled by WordPress. It takes some dynamic data from your site, like, for example, the URL that it pulled in here. We're using some kind of variable when it built this page. But as we're going to see in just a minute, the privacy policy is actually pretty thin. So if we open this on the front end, this is all the content that's pre-filled. And of course, they can't write the privacy policy for you. And this is it right here. What the, the idea is, they have content here, and it kind of gives you an idea of what to add in or possibly what to research to put more information in. For example, down at the bottom, they end with just headlines, how we protect your data, what data breach procedures we have in place. These are things that we should write about in the GDPR privacy policy. And this is something that would vary from site to site, so they can't presume to, to write it all for you. This is something that depends on what plugins you're running. And this is something that requires research and, and writing of this material to be GDPR compliant. So that's the first thing that happens. We have a privacy policy generator that is lacking, but at least it's something if you don't have one yet. So the second thing, if we go to actually back into settings, in tools, there it is. We have export personal data and erase personal data. So I'm just going to open export personal data. This is the page we'd go to if someone has requested the data that your site has on them. And what you need from them is their email address. If they don't have their email address in your system, this won't turn up anything. And when you do get their email address, you just enter it here and you click on send request. Now that request that's sent is basically a confirmation email confirming they actually own that email address and then they confirm it by clicking a link and then you go on to the next step. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just get an email from a user on, uh, on this website or an admin user on this website and we're just going to go through testing this out. Uh, while that user page is loading, one important thing that I haven't figured out yet is how do you as the webmaster confirm that someone is from the EU because the whole idea is these are EU citizens from anywhere in the world they can be anywhere in the world at any time and request their information from any website but how do you confirm they're actually from the EU does the EU have something set up where you can they send you their email address you take that you go to an EU website where you test it to make sure they're actually an EU citizen I haven't heard of it 
but you'd think it goes both ways, right? They have to confirm that their email address is real. And I think that we as webmasters need to be able to confirm that they're actually an EU citizen. That would make sense to me, but I haven't seen that yet. If you've seen it, let me know in the comments down below, but I have not seen it. So I'm gonna enter this email address right here. Go back to the export personal data page, paste it in here, then click on send request. And now we see more information down here, status pending, requested one minute ago, even though it was like three seconds ago, and waiting for confirmation. This is the step where they have to click on the link. And now you as the webmaster can go ahead and download the personal data as well. But we're gonna wait for that. We're gonna go through the process that they go through. So I'm gonna head into my super spam account. This is a really old account, 54,000 spam emails. I have an email, I haven't even opened this account in at least two years. Anyway, I'm gonna load up that email so you see what it looks like. So here's the email that's auto-generated by WordPress. It says, howdy, a request has been made to perform the following action on your account, export personal data. To confirm this, please click on the following link. So we'll click on that link and it says, thanks for confirming your export request. The site administrator has been notified. You'll receive a link to download your export via email when they fulfill your request. And the privacy policy we created earlier, that's linked to right here. All right, so let's go back to here, refresh this page. Now it shows as confirmed one minute ago, requested two minutes ago, and now we can click on email data, and that's gonna send them their data. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Email sent. Let's go back to my spam account to look at that email. And here's the email with our personal data. It says, howdy, your request for an expert of personal data has been completed. You may download your personal data by clicking on the link below. For privacy and security, we will automatically delete the file on May 20th, which is in three days, or I guess five days, uh, 72 hours from the date it was uh, sent, the, the date this email is sent. For 72 hours from then, they'll delete this file. And that's that. So let's check what this file looks like. We download a zip. Let's unzip it. And the content we have is right here. Now what I've done is I just attributed a comment to this user because this user hadn't done much on the site. So this information on this file does, or it lists everything that user has done on the website. Now I've got to do some testing to see how other plugins tie into this, like LearnDash, for example, or uh, Paid Memberships Pro, or any other kind of membership that tracks a person's usage on the site and see how it ties into this. I have a feeling it's going to be listed in here, whatever they're doing on your site. And this is what we have. So we have general information about the user. We have their IDs, their other information about the user, and then the stuff they're actually done on your site. Comment, uh, just, I change it to random spam comment. I double click on that by mistake. So I change the title or the comment author to random spam, spam comment, added an email, and I just basically attributed a comment to this person. And now I know this information is owned or is contained on that site. And now I wanna have it removed. Now I need to email the webmaster again and say, hey, that's great, buddy. Thanks for sending me that. I want to remove it. But first I'm gonna refresh this page. Now this person's gonna show as completed because they've clicked on the link to download their data. So here we are as completed. We can click on remove requests to basically clean up our requests in here. And then that will be taken away from here. But now say I want to have my junk deleted. So I'm gonna copy this email address. I'm gonna head over to tools, erase personal data. I'm gonna paste the email address in here and click on send request. As you probably notice, there's a lot of emailing back and forth going on. It's not a super streamlined process. And that's partly because this was rushed out by WordPress. Even though we've had two years to prepare, it's kind of rushed out. It's uh, when it's released, it's eight days before the deadline. So it's pretty last minute, I would think for two years of, of, of lead time. But if we check out this email for the delete, deletion request, basically says, howdy, request has been made to perform the following action on your account, erase personal data. To confirm this, please click the following link. I'm gonna click on that, and presumably it's gonna delete my admin account. Luckily I don't use that admin account. Uh, it says here, thanks for confirming your erasure request. Erasure, erasure, is that even a word? Erasure, erasure, erasure. Anyhow, um, We've now confirmed we want to erase the content that they have on us or the data they have on us. Let's refresh this and see what this says. 
So here it says confirmed, meaning I click the link, then I click on erase personal data. Now all the data found on this user has been erased. So let's go to users and refresh this page and see if dev Bjorn Alpass gmail.com is gone. And it's not gone. It's still there. So let's just go to my email account here. I probably got another email saying, yeah, erase your request ref uh, fulfilled. So it looks like the account has remained, but all the data associated with the account has likely been removed. So if we go and test this again, under the export personal data page, I'll just go ahead and click on remove request, and then I will make a new one. This time I'll just click on the download personal data link without going through the whole process. The link you follow has expired. I don't think it likes that I'm doing the same one over and over again. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so it worked anyway. So I'm gonna try downloading personal data. And now, theoretically, this should be empty. If this file that I download right now is not empty, there's a problem and hopefully it's resolved by the time this is actually released tomorrow. Let's unzip this new file we have and take a look at it. Okay, so the, the original file contained the comments and presumably if you have a bunch of other stuff going on your site, it would list all the things that individual user has done on your site. And the new one has erased that comment. Presumably if they made blog posts and comments and had say course progress and all kinds of other stuff going on on your site, that would all be deleted when, they when you request and confirm that erasure. Learn a new word today. Uh, so now we still have the user account, which you can go ahead and delete manually if they want you to delete it. Just go into users, click on delete, or if there's multiple, check the boxes and then use delete under bulk actions. So you get to delete the whole user like that. But as for just how the functionality works, it's just deleting the content that person created on your website. And that's the entirety of what WordPress has done so far for the GDPR. I assume there's gonna be more stuff coming because there's a rushed release and there's a lot more stuff that can still be done. And a lot of it comes back to, you have, just have to have the, the, the privacy policy that states all the ways you collect data and how you deal with that data. And that's the hardest part. WordPress has now made it easier to do the backend part where it shows what data you have. It would not show what data you would have in other platforms if you integrate with others. I assume that they would have some way of giving you that information. If you give them the user, the user ID, then you can have that information. It's very complicated, as you know. This is probably a move in the right direction where people know what information of theirs is out there. And as these companies start to catch up, it's gonna get easier and easier for us to actually comply with it and have it be manageable. But again, how do we confirm that someone is actually in the EU? I don't know. Maybe someone else knows. If you do know, leave it in the comments down below so we can all learn. So watch out for this WordPress update tomorrow and make sure you install it and get ready for the GDPR on May 25th. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the private Facebook group. The link is in the description down below. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side to get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.